So in the introductory lecture, we saw that uh, there is a problem here uh, when we just treat observations of related lineages as if they are independent because it causes us to uh, uh, detect false positives, which we mustn't do. And uh, we saw briefly uh, the model of Brownian motion and uh, how we can use that as kind of a no model for how a phenotypic traits, continuous valued phenotypic traits uh, evolve over time. And then in the simulation, we looked at uh, actually a case where, of course, we want to see some kind of correlation. So in this case, this was a correlation between uh, the environment and the trait and the location of the, uh, of the lineage. And of course, that is mostly what we're trying to do here, right? We're not trying to uh, detect cases where everything just evolves independently and there's no trade correlations. No, no, we want to detect cases where somehow natural selection is giving rise to combinations of traits which then somehow make sense in an uh, evolutionary context. So what are we supposed to do? Well, let's start with... Uh, I guess the, the first major method that tried to deal with this and that tried to therefore deal with the effect of phylogeny and that method is known as independent contrasts or phylogenetic independent contrasts. This is uh, Felsenstein 1985. So what do we have here? Well, we have now uh, four lineages, A, B, C and D. And for those four lineages at the tips, the uh, values for two uh, continuous traits have been measured, trait X and trait Y. And so uh, in the tree on the left, we can see those raw values at the tip. So uh, A has a value of four for X, B has a value of five, C has one and D has two. And for Y, uh, a has 4.7, B has 6.1, C has 1.8, and D has 3.4. And what the method attempts to do is to tease apart the uh, uh, part of the process where lineages are uh, evolving their trait uh, in a common ancestor, so non-independently, and the part where there's actually independent evolution. Uh, so for example, on this tree, the terminal branches are the branches where there's independent evolution for each of the tips. Uh, and then on the internal branches, well, there's actually two clades, so AB on the one hand and CD on the other, and those two clades are evolving independently. And so the trick here is, well, can we tease that apart. So now we're going to transform our observations at the tip to uh, contrasting changes uh, on the tree. And we can do that uh, at the tips by subtracting one from the other. So for example, if we subtract the value uh, of x for taxon B from that of taxon A, well then there's an independent amount of evolution to the tune of minus one, let's say four minus five. And we do the same for uh, uh, trait Y, and we uh, subtract those from one another. Well, there we have uh, independent evolution in trait Y for uh, a value of, what is it, minus 1.4 if we subtract B from A. So then that gives us kind of the amount of independent evolution in both of these traits uh, within clade AB. And we can do the same for uh, CD. And then we can actually uh, travel from the tips to the root by then uh, first doing a kind of uh, ancestor state reconstruction. So then we say, well, so at the uh, common ancestor uh, of A and B, so at AB, uh, the value of uh, X that we reconstruct, so X prime, is 4.5, basically just the average, right? And the same we can do for trade Y, and then that's the average 
between 4.7 and 6.1, so that's a value of 5.4, uh, and so on. Now, you might recall from the earliest simulation of Brownian motion, where we were just traveling from left to right uh, through time, and did that a whole bunch of times, that the variance uh, basically increases in proportion to time. And uh, that's a term we need to take into account here as well. Uh, basically, the variance sort of propagates uh, through the tree. And we do that by lengthening the interior branches. So how does that work? Well, uh, here what we do is we... Uh, basically uh, lengthen the uh, interior branch in proportion to the length of the daughter branches uh, using the simple uh, division shown here. So we take the length of one branch times the length of another divided by the sum of the two. And that basically gives us an uh, adjusted branch length that uh, is going to be proportional to the variance which uh, accumulates over the course of evolutionary time. Now, if we do that throughout the tree, then we get values that look like the following. So here we again have our two variables, x and y, and we have for each variable three contrasts, the contrast between a and b between D and C and between the two clades A, B and C, D. And then in the column that says contrast value, it shows what the subtraction is, right? So 4 minus 5, 2 minus 1, 4.5 minus 1.5. And that gives us these raw contrasts. So these are not just the differences in values, they, uh, they are subtracted in a fixed order from one another. So because we take both uh, the subtraction for trade X and trade Y, we have to do that in the same direction. So it's not just the absolute difference, it's uh, you know, in a particular order. And of course, for each variable, for both variables, we can switch this around and in both cases subtract B from A, but the point here is that it needs to be consistent. Okay, then, so then we have our raw contrasts. But uh, then we are going to uh, take into consideration this, this notion of the increasing variance. And of course, from the variance, we can uh, then reconstruct the standard deviation by basically taking the square root, don't we? Um, so when we do that, then we can um, divide our raw contrasts by that to obtain standardized contrasts and so those are shown in the final column there and so those are the things that we want to have these standardized contrasts because they're these are now independent and they uh, give us basically reconstructions of the amount of independent evolution in whatever direction uh, starting from a common ancestor to the next node or tip so what's that look like? Well, then we uh, basically go from the wrong plot, which is on the left, to the correct plot, which is on the right. So on the left, we just have the raw values uh, plotted. And remember, we were not supposed to do that because that could give us a uh, false positive. Um, and now on the right, we have our uh, independent contrasts. So this is... Uh, not four, but three, because remember we had uh, the contrast for A versus B, for C versus D, and then the contrast between the two clades. So this gives us three uh, contrasts. And for these three contrasts, where we now do a, a regression, we have to consider the following. So what we are in each case looking at is the amount of independent evolution over the course of some stretch of time starting at the point where the uh, two daughter lineages were the same because they were were start at the the bifurcation the split where they go in go off in opposite or in different directions but at, at 
t is uh, zero, let's say when the split happens, well then they're still identical, right? So then we'd look at from the point of where they're identical, how much change does uh, accumulates in each of the trades and in what direction. And what this means for our analysis is that we then have to force our uh, regression through the origin, so the point where x equals uh, zero and y equals zero, which is shown in the plot on the right. So independent contrasts was basically the first uh, method for phylogenetic comparative analysis. Um, and in some ways, it's a special case of something that we'll look at a little bit later. Um, now, it's uh, still very commonly used, but it's got a couple of uh, drawbacks. So just briefly, uh, we need our tree to be fully bifurcating. And uh, that isn't always the case. So why does it need to be bifurcating? Well, for each of the trades, we're subtracting one lineage from another and that needs to be in the same order and um, of course if there's not a just a bifurcation by the polytomy well then uh, there is no particular order in which you can subtract one from the other right which which one do we do against which other one so that doesn't work so the tree needs to be fully resolved and of course, then the trick is to randomly resolve with zero length interior branches or all sorts of hacks are being applied. But OK, that's one drawback. Another is that these contrasts are a bit harder to interpret than the raw values. So it also makes it a bit harder to detect something special about particular species or lineages. And then finally, another drawback is well, how uh, are we going to deal with more complex uh, models? So here we're just assuming um, a Brownian motion and we don't really have a way to test hypotheses other than, well, are the two correlated or not? So perhaps there are better approaches that we might look at uh, later on. Thanks for listening.